Did that work? All right, thank you guys for joining us tonight out of your busy days. Um, this is going to be the soccer and volleyball fall 2020 coaches and parent meeting. My name is Joshua Sandin, recreation coordinator, along with Logan Anderson and Matthew Tiki Lee. Matthew is going to be covering the soccer portion first for about 30, 35 minutes. And then Logan's gonna dive into the volleyball portion for the fall season. All right, we'll get started as Josh said. My name is Matt Tiki Lee. For those that don't know me, I am in charge of our youth soccer program. Uh, and welcome to our 2020 coaches and parents meeting. Uh, first of all, as we all know, but just to reiterate, this year is definitely gonna be Certainly different than in times past um, with a lot of guidelines and protocols that we will have to follow in order to make the season go ahead and run. Um, why we still get to play. Uh, we just want to let you guys know, obviously rec sports is more of a same geographic location. We don't have to travel long distances. So that definitely helped out. Uh, rec sports also has smaller crowds and we did, as you guys hopefully got the email, limit the number of practices per week to once a week, just to help us with field space and spacing out, social distancing and all that stuff per day. Um, as a staff, we do have the ability, obviously, to make changes to the format um, with the season, how the rules will work, and then also spectators. We will go into more detail on that here shortly, um, but we are trying our best. We all want to have a season go. So we try to do and make the best uh, adaptations we can to the season to make it help run. Uh, and then also outdoor sports definitely helped in the process of us, of us uh, being able to have fall sports happen, especially with volleyball, having to go outside. It definitely gives us a better opportunity with social distancing to be outside. Um, some of the guidelines and protocols that we will go over, but also we do have Bobby. He will be sending out a video tomorrow with uh, the more in-depth detail of the protocols and guidelines. We're just gonna cover it real quick, just to give you guys the uh, quick summary of it. Um, face masks and coverings are going to be highly encouraged if social distancing can't be maintained. Uh, this is a state guideline, so no one's gonna be required to wear a mask, but if we do see people congregating, um, if you're not within your family cohort, something like that, we will ask you guys to either social distance so you don't have to put the mask on or be ready to put a mask on. Um, again, we are trying our best not to have that happen. So please just try your best to socially distance as much as you can. That way we can have the season happen. Um, in each coaching bag for the coaches we have on the meeting right now, you guys will get a bag of soccer balls, pennies, and then there also will be a aerosol sanitizer can within that bag. If you guys do run out of that, certainly let us know. Um, but we are suggesting that you guys help us out and just go ahead and spray down the balls after practice. Even though I know for soccer, you don't necessarily touch the ball as much with your hands, just as a safety precaution please try your best to spray those after each practice. Uh, we are asking this year that you don't share drinks or food with anybody. Um, please bring your own water bottle to each of the facilities, whether you're at Diamond Valley, Chimney Park, Eastman Park, or uh, Boardwalk Park, correct. And we'll again, go into further detail on that. That might be news to you guys here shortly. So I'll cover that in a sec, um, but also, we have unfortunately asked you guys, or we are asking you guys to not bring oranges to halftime for soccer. I know that is a big, big thing. I always enjoyed that as a kid, but unfortunately, just due to safety and sanitizing issues, please refrain from doing that. But you guys can bring post-game snacks just as long as they are individually packaged and then one person is handing those out. Um, everybody can take the snacks. They certainly don't have to. Um, so if you have people that don't end up taking them, that's completely fine. Uh, with practices, 
to help with the number of people that we are allowing out at the facility, um, the number that we've been given, we have at, or we are asking and strongly encouraging no spectators at practices um, unless you're helping with the coach, with the practice, or you're more than welcome to stay in your car. We are just limited to the number of people to uh, allow out of each side of the field. So on the east side, we're allowed 175 people. And then on the west side, we also are allowed 175 people. So again, if we go a little over, it's not the end of the world, but I strongly recommend not coming to the practices unless you have to. But I know this is something different because in the past, we've always encouraged you guys to stick around and not just drop your kid off and then leave. Um, but this year, we are kind of either having you leave or again, staying parked in your car for the duration of the practice. Uh, game days, we are again asking for a limitation on spectators. Uh, two immediate family members per player, uh, that would just help with the number of games because we are planning on having three game fields happen on each side. That's how we've calculated the numbers out. Um, to where we can have games happen each Saturday. Um, and then also with soccer, there will possibly be some Fridays. We are doing our best to stay within those Saturday timeframes, but we will potentially have to do some Fridays or have really long Saturdays on some weeks. Uh, to carry on, so you guys should have received a fall soccer timeline, but I just wanted to cover a few things. Uh, team rosters this year. It's been, again, a completely different year. Usually we'd get the team rosters out a lot sooner, um, but with just everything that we've had to endure, we have still not gotten those rosters out. We are obviously going to have to get those out soon because we got practices starting Monday. We are hoping that we would have those out by 3 o'clock tomorrow. Um, with practices starting next Monday, once you guys get the rosters, you will find out which days your kiddos will be on. Um, we did our best. If you have a kid practicing one day and then another kid practicing another day, unfortunately, there's nothing we could do with that. Just we did the best we could. So I hope you guys would be willing to understand that and help us out with uh, not as many requests because we did our best we could. Um, coaches cancel for weather. So it is up to the coach if they want to practice. That just helps us out to make the decision just as a specific team. Um, so the coach can make that decision. Um, and then again, once you find out your rosters, that will have the day of the practice. And that should stay the same for the duration of the entire season unless something unexpected comes up and we have to change things. Uh, game schedules, I'm hoping to get posted the week of August 31st. It'll probably be around the middle of that week. And then Little Wizards might be later, but at the same time, since Little Wizards is actually starting the same week this year, uh, I will do my best to get that out as well. Schedules will be up on teamsideline.com slash Windsor, and then they'll also be on your team sites as well. Uh, games will start Saturday, September 12th for all of our divisions, travel, rec, and youth, or Little Wizards. And then the season ends for Little Wizards on the 3rd of October, the 17th of October for rec and then travel will go to the 31st of October. Um, weather cancellation dates. Uh, we have a the following Saturday reserved uh, for cancellation purposes um, or if we get more cancellations we again may have to throw games on Fridays and if you are scheduled for a doubleheader that certain Saturday that gets canceled we probably will end up only making one of those games. Um, Next, I know I touched on it a little earlier, uh, but all practices for U5 through U12 will be out at Eastman Park like normal each week. Um, but with that, games will happen for the U10 program actually at Diamond Valley. So we do have new fields at Diamond Valley that we just got access to uh, at the beginning of this week, actually. So. They're brand new, um, they're great fields. So we've found that just, just based on what the number of spectators we can allow, um, we found out that if we had one U12 game and one U10 game, that pretty much covers all of our spectators and attendance 
for that hour of a game. So we decided to move the U10s to the DV fields to help accommodate with that. Little Wizards will take place at Chimney Park on Aaron Cook Field. So again, if you guys need further information on that, certainly let me know. And then the travel teams will be primarily practicing out at Diamond Valley on the multi-use fields. And then they will also be playing their games on the south field that we have out there. Uh, the, there is a new format to the Eastman Park layout. For those that have played in previous seasons, it probably doesn't look a whole lot different, but we do have three additional U8 fields in place of one of the two uh, U12 fields. That again is to help with social distancing purposes and then also during games when we have more fields available for U8, we can certainly get more games in at a time that way as well. But your U6 and your U5 games will be on the east side of Eastman Park and then U8, U12 will be on the west side. Uh, this is just a reminder, parking is uh, pretty tough at Eastman Park, unfortunately. So we do have an overflow parking available at Eastman Park each day. Um, we will see if we do need it with just the amount of people that we're allowed. We may not need it. The parking lot that we have in between the two spaces could be enough. But as the season goes on, I'll just monitor that. And if we do need to add more parking, just in case, we certainly can. But reminder, you can't park in along the street on 7th Street or Eastman Park Drive. But when the church isn't having something going on, you can also use that parking as overflow parking for game days as well. Um, before I go into too much detail into rules, I know it'll probably take more than 15 minutes to cover. So I just wanted to give you guys a heads up. We are going to send out our parent packet um, tomorrow as well, and that'll have all of the details thoroughly covered in that for rules and everything on the season two. So if I do skip over something during the rules, that is why. Uh, so for Little Wizards, it is a youth, uh, four-year-old program. Um, each participant does get a t-shirt for participating. And then each game is uh, on Saturdays only. So it is an hour time slot. And again, these will be out at Aaron Cook Field at Chimney Park. Um, the first 30 minutes of that game will actually be a practice for your team. And then the second half of the 30 minutes, the following 24 minutes will be broken down into four quarters. And that's when you guys will play a game against the other team that is on the same field at Aaron Cook. Um, it's 4v4. Each team should have eight players on it. We may have a couple with nine, but for the majority, it should be eight players. And then all fouls and balls out of play are just restarted with a kick from the nearest touch line. There are no throw-ins because at that age, it is pretty tough to get those kiddos to throw the ball in. Um, for U5 and U6, it's the same field size, but we do obviously have referees for these age groups. It'll still be 4v4. Um, one thing I wanted to certainly cover was the no ball contact in the goal box or poison area. Um, for those that aren't aware, just to go forward, this is what a goal box would look like on our U6 and U, or U5 and U6 fields. So anything inside of that box, if the ball stops inside of that box before it goes into the goal or rolls out of the box over the end line or back into play, the players are supposed to not touch that. If it does become dead, um, then it will be a throw in for whoever bounced off of last. The other team will then get the ball and they will throw it in from there. It does take a few weeks to um, get the kiddos to understand this rule. One, it's in there just to, for safety purposes. So we don't have a bunch of kids running toward the goal and accidentally maybe tripping into the goal. Uh, or also it's in there to teach them to space out as well and not crowd around the goal. To go back to the rules, uh, just a few more things to cover. Again, all throw in, or all restarts are going to be throw-in. So if there's a foul call, it will be a throw-in. There are no corner kicks or goal kicks at this age group. Everything will be thrown in from that hash mark on the field, which is pictured there. 
And then you can't, I have seen some kids score from the other half, but unfortunately that does not count. And we encourage to not have goalkeepers, obviously, and there is no offsides. And big thing is there is no slide tackling throughout the Windsor Recreation Soccer Department. Um, just again, here's a quick picture, a couple pictures of what the fields and boxes will look like out at U6 and U5 fields. Um, U8, again, it's still 4v4, but the size of the field gets bigger. Um, and you can kick off in any direction, so you don't have to pass the ball forward before it can go backwards. You can kick directly for, backwards to your team. Um, that was a rule that was implemented a couple of years by USA Soccer, and we've adopted that rule. Uh, there will be corner kick or goal kicks, but there is still not corner kicks. So it is still a throw. Um, any foul is an indirect free kick. So whether it's a handball, a foul, anything like that, whether it's indirect or a direct foul, it is still an indirect kick. So that means the ball has to be touched by more than one player before it can be put in the net. So if there's a foul on one side, or toward the offensive goal, you can't just directly kick it into the net. They have to then pass it to somebody before they can put it in the net. And again, oh, no offsides and no slide tackling. Um, this is just the U8 field. Uh, we did add the bigger box. So that is a goal. That is where the goal kick will take place. Everybody is to stay outside of that box. Um, but the offensive team can actually stand in that box and the ball doesn't have to be necessarily played outside the box. It can be passed to another teammate and then the defensive team can then pressure the ball and come into that box from there. Um, 7v7 for U10, uh, the field size, as you can see, the 180 by 100. Again, these games will actually be taking place out at Diamond Valley this year on Saturdays. Uh, practices will still be at Eastman Park, but games will be out at Diamond Valley. There will be four 12 minute quarters. Um, goal kicks and now corner kicks are involved and unintentional fouls again result in an indirect free kick and there are no penalty kicks. And I'm gonna go ahead and move on because I know I have quite a bit still to do and not a whole lot of time. With U10, we do have what we call the build out line is that blue line there. So if the goalie receives the ball inside the box, all players, on the defensive end have to move back past that build out line. Um, it is there to promote playing the ball out of the back with uh, less pressure. Uh, it gives the goalkeeper the opportunity to take the goal kick and be able to pass it to somebody where they may not necessarily be able to kick it that far. So it gives them the opportunity to then play a ball to a teammate inside of that build out line. Um, and again, I have seen it in the past. Please, coaches, as U10 coaches, do not hang a player back past that build out line and then go ahead and then play a long ball over the top to the other player across the field. Um, that's definitely not what we're encouraging. Please just, if you are going to play short, play the ball out to them and then have your team build from there and continually to pass the ball four or five passes before we get that long ball through. Uh, we do have a question in the slide. It says for you at U8, is there a larger box? Is the larger box the poison box or the smaller? Good question, sorry. So the smaller box is still that poison box. The larger box is just there to have space to where uh, everybody will have to be outside of that. And then that gives the person kicking the goal kick the chance to have a kick not under pressure. But to go back to uh, the U10 build out line, one last thing I wanted to say is once the ball is played out and the player receives the ball, that is when the defensive team can then go past the build out line. So it's not as soon as the goalie kicks it or plays it out to their next teammate, it is when the ball is received by that teammate, then the defense can then go pressure them. So if you have any questions, certainly let me know after this is all said and done. But this is just, again, a picture of what the build out line will look like. It is a dashed line out on our U10 fields. For U12, uh, there is no build out line and it does increase into 9v9. 
the field size does get bigger and these are actually two 25 minute halves instead of four quarters. Um, goal kicks and corner kicks are again in this round and we do move up to the size four soccer ball for both U10 and U12. Um, for U12, just as a heads up, we will potentially have some travel involved. I believe right now all I've heard from is berthed on having a couple teams. So there may be a week or two where we will have a couple teams travel over to berthed to play games there. I have not heard from TRPR Eaton yet, but that certainly may change. Um, player equipment, just wanted to make sure to go over a few things. Everybody needs a universal reversible jersey. It's maroon and gold. If you do not have one, you can come purchase one here at the rec center. Um, they are $25 a piece. You can use them for multiple seasons. So I do recommend getting them maybe a little size bigger just in case you don't want to keep buying a new jersey each year. Shin guards, uh, socks. So socks are optional, but shin guards are required. Um, shorts or sweats are perfectly fine. You can wear shoes, but we do encourage you guys wearing soccer cleats or tennis shoes. But those cleats, as you can see in this picture, they cannot have the toe in the front. So I know football cleats have a rubber toe at the very front. If you want them to use football cleats, they certainly can, but you have to cut off of that rubber cleat there at the top. And also from the other picture, as you can see, certainly don't wear metal cleats for that. No jewelry is allowed. And then season expectations, um, quickly to go over that. We want the kids to learn the fundamentals of the game. Um, we've had, we ha between all of our coaches, we have some that have more experience, some that have less experience. Please don't be judgmental as a parent on the coaches. They're volunteering their time. So please, if you can, certainly help them out with practices. If you have knowledge that they may not know and they can use the help for, with that, certainly give them and pass along that information. They are more than willing to have the help I can guarantee it. Uh, we hope that each player learns playing positions. So at the younger age groups, I know it's a little tougher to keep those guys organized, but really, if you can keep them organized, it really goes a long way as they move forward into the older age groups, understanding playing each position, whether that's a defensive position, a midfield position, or a striker forward position as they get older. Um, equal playing time is obviously our number one thing as a rec department. If for some reason coaches aren't playing their kids equal playing time, if they have a legitimate reason why for the players are coming up to practices and they're just coming to games, then they certainly have every right to not play that kid as much as the other kids that do attend every practice each week. But if there are kids coming to practice regularly, and they're not seeing the same amount of playing time, certainly let me know and I will talk to the coach there. Um, and lastly, if you want as parents, you can certainly touch base with the coaches to get their expectations and policies for the season. I wanted to finish with one quick video just to show you guys that this is all we're trying to do as a recreation department is encourage fun and we're not all about winning. So here's a quick video. Hope Hello there. If you're like most parents, your child doing well in sports is pretty darn important to you. In fact, you're probably willing to do whatever it takes to help them succeed. Even correct the refs when necessary. Back into it, huh? Come on. You give them extra practices, tips on form, but what if I told you the real secret to giving them the edge? Would you do it? Great. Because it's you lightening up. Hmm? Sounds crazy. We know. But studies have shown that kids perform better, play later in life, and yes, actually enjoy sports more when their parents are bold enough to chill out. It can feel unnatural at first, but with practice, you can learn to help your kids succeed. So the next time coach pulls little Sophie from the action, consider something like sideline yoga. There's nothing more calming than a well-timed downward dog. <laughs> Hips up, core tight, down, and focus. Nope, focus. Adult coloring books. So many subjects to choose from. Or you could go all in for a nice calming massage. So when you find yourself sleepless over Junior's draft prospects, 
Just remember, cutting edge parents today are going all in on backing off. Because sometimes the best thing you can do is just chill. Hey, here we go. We're chilling. You chilling? All right, so hopefully you enjoyed that video. One other thing I wanted to mention uh, just before I pass it off to Logan for the volleyball portion of the meeting is I did not talk about the referees. Um, as parents, please, if you have an issue with an official, if you have something to say to them, please don't say it to them. Come find one of our supervisors. Um, if it's something encouraging, go right ahead. But if you're going to talk down to them or anything like that, or you have an issue with something that they're not doing right, which that may be the case, certainly come one of our supervisors. I'll be out there each Saturday. So if you have an issue with an official, please come find me. Uh, and with that, I guess I just wanted to touch one other thing. We did have a question in the chat about the rosters. Again, those hopefully will be out by 3 o'clock tomorrow at the latest. And then one other thing I wanted to cover. Sorry, I keep rambling on, Logan. But uh, mask are strongly encouraged. They're not necessarily required. They're only going to be asked to be worn if you guys cannot maintain social distancing or if the coaches bring them in for a huddle. We are encouraging the kids to wear masks if they're going to be in small groups. So just make sure I would say have a mask with you just in case you need it. Um, with that, I guess let me take maybe if you don't let me take like two, two or three questions, if anybody has them right now, before we pass it on to Logan for volleyball. Really quick. Yep. Do we, when, when should we come pick up all of our um, equipment and stuff? Good question. Um, so equipment will be passed out on the uh, first day of practices for all the coaches. That'll be found at the uh, concession stand at Eastman Park. So I would just recommend maybe come in 15, 10, 15 minutes before your first practice. I'll have all of that equipment ready for you to pick up and that you can just head straight over to practice after that. So a lot of us kids in school now, and uh, God forbid that, that their cohort needs to get sent home for COVID mm -hmm. um, prevention. How do we deal with that if our, if our kid is sent home? Gotcha. So Bobby, like we said earlier, Bobby will uh, go into more detail on the video that he's going to record tomorrow and we're going to send out tomorrow on that. But we are, if for some reason, hopefully not, but if someone does get COVID on a certain team, um, we are asking that that player then quarantines and if they were in contact with their team, before they found out that they did have COVID for sure, um, we are gonna have that team then quarantine as well. Um, say on a soccer Saturday, if somebody finds out they had COVID the following week and they didn't know they had it on that Saturday, that soccer team and then the team that they played will then be asked to quarantine for a while. Obviously we hope this doesn't happen, um, but it certainly can. So we will just have to adjust as we go. Um, and I hope you guys can all be, I know, willing and flexible to make things work as well. One more question if we have it. If not, I'll go ahead and pass it on to Logan. All right, looks like if you have questions, certainly email me, give me a phone call. I apologize if you've been trying to get a hold of us the past few days. We've been certainly busy trying to get the rosters and everything going. So once this practices start going, I should be able to get all of those phone calls and emails answered to the best of my ability. So just reach out to me if you do have a question. But here is Logan to carry on with the volleyball presentation. Hi guys, my name is Logan Anderson. Um, let me back out of this presentation real quick and then I can go ahead and start the youth volleyball uh, presentation to kind of go over that. Um, my hope is to kind of go over what the season will look like. Uh, uh, just definitely due to COVID and then uh, some of the rules and stuff that we are going to be um, uh, enforcing and stuff out there. And, and then at the end, I can ask uh, if anybody has any questions, we can kind of go over everything. 
Um, and then we'll kind of wrap it up that way. So for those that were just here for soccer, you're more than welcome to kind of leave the meeting. For those that are um, gonna be here for volleyball, we'll start the presentation uh, pretty much right now. All right, so for those that do not know me, uh, my name is Logan Anderson. Um, I've worked for the town for about 10 years now. This is my technically my first year um, uh, going to be helping out with volleyball. Uh, Josh Sandin, um, for those of you that participated in volleyball last year, he will also be right alongside me helping me coordinate this season. Um, so if you do have any other questions kind of throughout the entire season, you can always reach out to myself or you can reach out to him. Um, we'll both be the go to for this uh, season. Uh, volleyball in general, I helped out with a few years ago. It's probably been four or five years, so I'm not super new, but uh, at the same time, this will be my uh, first year technically kind of overseeing it in general. Um, so to kind of start out with this presentation, um, the kind of the general theme, um, both pretty much for all of our sports, is this year is going to be different, uh, especially with volleyball compared to a lot of the other sports. Um, you'll see a lot of different changes, particularly the fact that this will not be an indoor league and it will be an outdoor league. Um, so bear with us with the changes. Um, I always like to kind of go back and say, at least we're able to play. So we're doing everything we can so the kiddos can be outside and just have a season. Uh, so all in all, no matter what changes and stuff that we make, at the end of the day, at least they're able to get out and play sports. Same kind of thing with soccer. So why we can play and others can't. Uh, for the most part, we are going to be in the same location. So we don't have to necessarily travel uh, long distances like high school sports and stuff do. Um, we are, uh, for those of you that don't know, everybody should know, but if you do not, um, we are limiting practices to one time per week. In past seasons, we have done two practices a week and then games on Saturdays. Uh, this year, to help with social distancing, we are going to go down to just one practice a week, and then we will have um, games on Saturday still. For volleyball specifically, we will have all games on Saturday, so there won't be any Friday games or anything like that, unless for some reason we have to make up some stuff. But for the most part, it will be just Saturday games. Uh, early morning to early afternoon is what we plan on, um, and that's going to be the same as in past years. The other thing is, since it is outdoors, um, that's the one sole reason why we are still being able to play volleyball. Um, we do not have access to like the school facilities and we don't have uh, kind of the guidelines and stuff. We are unable to use the rec center uh, for volleyball in general. And so we kind of, as an athletics team got together and figured out what ways we could still offer this program. And that way was to have it at um, an outdoor location. We decided to have this at Boardwalk Park. Um, we feel that that is gonna be like the biggest area, um, not only that we can help with social distancing, um, but it makes it easy because it is a central Windsor location as well. Um, and again, just a reminder, all practices and games will be at that location at Boardwalk Park. So to go over guidelines and protocols, uh, the biggest thing I feel like people are gonna have questions about is gonna be the masks and if they are required. Um, so wearing masks isn't required. Um, it is strongly encouraged, but it is it will be required if um, social distancing cannot be maintained. So if we are having some issues where people are kind of gathering up in large groups, we will ask um, if people can wear masks. There'll also be certain look, um, certain occasions as if like the beginning of the game when coaches get together or when the refs um, get together at the very beginning of the game to kind of go over uh, who serves first and stuff like that. In those small instances, um, we will recommend wearing masks just because those are going to be instances where um, people are going to have to be close together uh, anyways. This season will be a little bit different um, as far as the equipment. So the plan is, is pretty much every day for practice and then for games on Saturdays, we will be as supervisors setting up the nets. So they're going to be outdoor nets. Um, with that being said, of course, they're not going to be as great as our indoor nets. Uh, the nets are actually pretty good, um, but 
There may be some times where, I don't know, maybe they accidentally fall over if they get hit really hard with a volleyball. Um, so we just ask for patience and stuff there. We went out there and set up a couple of them just to kind of see how um, they're going to be set up. And they do, in general, look pretty good. And hopefully we have a pretty good season um, with them. The other thing is, is as far as volleyballs go, um, typically those used to be at our facilities. They uh, just due to um, COVID related, we're going to just give those volleyballs to coaches. And so each coach will receive a um, ball bag with a spray can um, of like an aerosol sanitizer. Uh, we asked coach kind of use their best judgment as far as keeping those clean, um, spraying it with a sanitizer. We'll also incorporate a ball pump um, within those bags as well. All of those ball bags will be given out the first day of practice, uh, just like soccer. So anybody who's gonna be practicing uh, next week, we will be handing out those ball bags there. The volleyballs, I know each grade uh, kind of uses some different volleyballs. The pretty much third through eighth grade will be using just an outdoor volleyball. It's not gonna be any specific like we normally use for our indoor season. Um, the first and second graders will be using the trainer balls, which are going to be like the little bit bigger volleyballs. Uh, we are hoping that those, we can figure out a way to fit those in the ball bags. They are pretty big, so it may be for first and second grade teams that we keep those out at the facility. But of course, we'll inform you and stuff the first day of practice on how we go about doing that. Um, big thing, so no sharing drinks or food. Uh, just like when we used to have volleyball in the indoor facilities, of course, they had access to water and stuff. There will be a water fountain out at Boardwalk Park, but we do highly encourage you um, to bring your own water bottle uh, and snacks and stuff and do not share any of those with anyone else. And just kind of a safe practice. We encourage players and coaches to bring hand sanitizer, um, more the better. And simple things like no post-game handshakes, um, and then as well as game days. So we're hoping to limit the number of individuals uh, that come to games and practices. We don't want necessarily anyone lingering around. Um, we're going to do our best to kind of break up practices and break up games to where we allow people to come and go so we don't have huge crowds at those areas. Uh, but just kind of keep that in the back of your mind as far as family members and friends and family and stuff. I know they want to come and support um, which is, is definitely great. However, just due to this year and due to COVID, we want to limit the amount of people at a specific location. This is a map kind of overview. If anybody's familiar with Windsor Lake um, and Boardwalk Park, they'll kind of know where this uh, vicinity is. Um, up by fields number seven and eight, we have like our museum buildings and stuff. Um, and then closer to field like one and three down over there is where like the beach area is at Windsor Lake. So this is how the fields will be laid out this year. We did our best to make them as flat as possible. Um, they are pretty much all pretty flat. Um, what uh, we're gonna experiment with this year is if your practice is at like, let's say it's at field number one, it might not always be at the same location. Um, we're gonna just kind of see how much like the grass gets um, wear and tear on it, depending on how many players and stuff are gonna be playing on each field. So there may be a time where we switch to different practice fields. Um, they'll all be painted the same. Um, we're actually gonna paint them just like we do a soccer field. So uh, the boundaries and stuff will be with white paint. I'll get into a little bit specific of what the fields or what the courts will look like in general, but um, they'll all be painted out there. And like I said, we'll do all the um, setting up the nets and stuff. So no one else has to worry about that. The band shelter, I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but if you go over to like the uh, lake itself in front of the shoreline, there's kind of a big circular concrete pad that you'll see between uh, field number one and field number three. That's where uh, we as staff are going to kind of have our hub. Uh, so if you do have any questions or you don't necessarily know where your game's at or where your practice is at, feel free to always come to that location and we'll have somebody there as far as the supervisor goes to kind of point you in the right direction and help you out if you have any issues or questions. So now kind of diving in a little bit to the divisions and equipment. So as far as rules go, everything is going to stay the same. Um, Score is going to stay the same. Pretty much everything uh, will be identical to how it would be played indoor, uh, with the exception of first and second grade. So the court is going to be 30 by 40 feet. And we'll, like I said, we'll get into diagrams and stuff a little bit to show you what the court looks like. Um, the 40 foot mark uh, for first and second grade will be a yellow line. So you'll see pretty much every line out there for the courts will be in white, it, with the exception of that first and second grade boundary line, which will be at 40 feet and that'll be yellow. Um, the one thing with first and second grade is, unfortunately, the outdoor nets did not come any lower than seven feet. So as of right now, when we set up the courts, we're going to set them at seven feet. I understand that that might be difficult for a first and second grade to hit over that. 
Um, Josh and I have kind of thrown around the idea that if it is too difficult and they are unable to play and unable to kind of get it over the net, we could potentially drill a couple holes in the poles um, for maybe a couple of the nets that we have to lower it to more of that six and a half foot range. Um, we, we didn't want to do that right away just because they are brand new nets, but if for some reason they don't work out, we can kind of throw around that idea and see if we can drop them down to six and a half feet. Again, uh, for first and second grade, they use that trainer ball. Um, it is a little bit bigger of a ball than our outdoor volleyball. Um, the trainer balls will be the same ones that we use for our indoor uh, for our league. So if you guys are familiar with those, they will be identical. Um, we did not buy any separate trainer balls for this outdoor league. So third and fourth grade, um, same with fifth and sixth, the court's going to be a 30 foot by 60 foot and the nets will be at seven feet for third and fourth and then seven feet four inches uh, for uh, fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth grade. So for officiating, uh, we will have officials on Saturdays. Um, there'll, there'll, there's gonna be, excuse me, there's gonna be one official um, for each game and they will be the uh, official as well as the scorekeeper. Now, of course, this is gonna be something that you're gonna have to bear with us because we don't, like our indoor facilities, we don't actually have a scoreboard um, like we normally do. And so the official will uh, not only kind of just keep score, but then also officiate the game. We ask that parents and coaches, uh, maybe more importantly, coaches kind of help out with keeping the score. Uh, again, just keeping it as fair as possible. The officials are gonna do the best that they can, but if there is any mistakes, we just ask that you uh, have patience and, and help our officials out as best as possible. So we will be, so for match play, um, we're gonna be playing three games and eat, within the three games, we'll have a 45 minute uh, time limit. So if the third game is not complete in the time limit, uh, then the game will end where it's at. So it will only go as far as 45 minutes per game. Um, the third game is not going to be a deciding game. It uh, score will not be kept. So for games one and two, uh, they'll be played rally score to 25 points. And then the third game for each grade will be uh, only played to 15 points. And then if all three games are completed within that 45 minutes and you do have some time left, uh, you can go ahead and keep playing. Um, again, you have that 45 minutes to play, so might as well play as much as you can. Any games after three games uh, won't be the official or the official will not keep any of those scores. So at the start of the match, uh, one coach and one captain will have a pregame meeting with officials. This is kind of like I said earlier in the meeting, this is where we want masks to be required um, just because it may uh, involve people having to get closer than six feet. So just kind of keep that in the back of your guys' mind. And then kind of a side note with masks in general, I understand that masks necessarily aren't required, but we do ask that everyone bring a mask for the occasion that there might be a circumstance in which you will need to wear one. Um, so just please be mindful of that. And doing that. Um, so the so determined which team will serve. Um, so there for the first game and second game at the beginning of the game, they'll do a coin toss. And so that'll determine uh, who serves first and then who serves for the second game. And the official will whistle for teams to serve um, three minutes before the start time. Prior to the third game, um, the officials will conduct another coin toss to, to determine who serves first for that specific game as well. And then teams are allowed two minutes between games, uh, but if everybody's ready, uh, we'll just kind of start the games back to back if people are ready before that two minutes hits. And then each team will have one timeout uh, per, the, per game. So for playing rules, um, release of the serve is not required. Uh, overhand serves can be executed, use good judgment though. Um, if the player uh, is, is more advanced and can serve it, they can definitely back up a little bit farther from the service line. This kind of goes hand in hand with both. Um, if they are good enough to kind of go behind the service line to do a farther serve, as well as if they are struggling and maybe they can't hit it over the net from the service line. If, co if both coaches agree, they can move a little bit uh, closer to the actual net so they can get that over the, um, get that over the net. Again, we're just, we're recreation league. We want everyone to have fun, but we're also here to teach the kids. Um, so if they are struggling, uh, kind of just help them out and uh, do what you can to make them um, kind of have the best time they can and then teach them everything that we can so they can be better off in the long run. Um, any ball that touches the net on the serve uh, is okay as long as the ball travels over the net um, and then that's a playable ball. So if the ball does hit the net and goes over, that's a playable ball. If it does not, then of course they will stop and then serve again. So for first and second grade, the service uh, line is gonna be 10 feet from the full size uh, volleyball court. 
Um, they get a second serve if they're unable to make it over the net. They are only going to be the grades that do have a second serve if they don't get it over the net, uh, third and fourth grade, and then fifth through eighth grade. So third and fourth grade um, service line is at the same line as what would be the end of the line for the first and second graders. And then fifth through eighth grade is the normal service line, which I'll go in a little bit more details with the diagrams that are to follow. So this is first and second grade. The service line for first and second grade, like I said earlier, will be painted yellow. Um, so that'll kind of stand out there. And then the inline, it will be a solid white line. Um, same with the line behind that. So for first and second grade, it's just going to be closer to that net. Um, again, that service line will be painted yellow. For third and fourth grade, uh, that the serve line will actually be the inline for first and second grade. So the service line will now be um, that solid white line. And then that inline behind them will also be a solid white line. And then for fifth, through fifth and sixth and seventh and eighth, they will be, um, the service line will also be the inline. So it'll be that far back white line. Um, and then the 10 foot lines will be the ones that are gonna be painted yellow. And then um, to kind of go with, I know it says the volley light and regulation ball up at the top. Um, like I said, with this league being outdoors, we just have a standard outdoor volleyball. So we won't be getting into any of the specifics as far as the volley lights and just the regular um, volleyballs themselves. So for scoring, um, it'll be a point awarded to the team who wins rally. It's an automatic side out. Um, so for each grade, it's a little bit different. First and second grade, they can have three consecutive points before it automatically turns over to the other team and allows that team to serve. Um, the point at the end of the third consecutive point will be counted and then the um, ball will then be given to the opposing team. So they have a chance to serve. Um, same kind of rule goes for third through sixth grade. However, it's going to be five consecutive points uh, before they have to turn it over and give it to the other team for a chance for them to serve. And then for seventh and eighth grade, there is, uh, there's no limit. Um, so it's just going to be how many points consecutively they have before they have to then give it back to the other team. Substitution. So it's going to be a continuous substitution. Um, rotation is required for each team first through sixth grade. Uh, rotations must be made after the ball is dead and before the next serve starts. And then we ask to rotate clockwise. You don't necessarily have to rotate within the server position. You can do it with the front left position. It's just up to you. Uh, seventh and eighth grade will be the only grades that coaches uh, can choose to run a different offense if they kind of want to try something different and educate those um, girls and boys that are going to be playing in that grade uh, to kind of give them just a little bit more um, education on volleyball in general. So to kind of close off the meeting, just a couple of reminders in general. Um, so as far as how the courts and stuff will be laid out at Boardwalk Park, one side of the court will be kind of like we do with the indoor league. One side of the court will be just for coaches and players. And then the other side will be for parents um, and spectators. We do ask, of course, to limit the amount of spectators that will be at each game. The other thing is, is to, to keep in mind when you are with um, your parents and families and friends to keep you guys in the same group. Um, and try to just social distance the best you can within other parents and friends and stuff from other uh, families. <coughs> Excuse me. So the coaches themselves will have to remain on that same side as well. So the coaches need to remain with the side of the players. Um, they can't walk around the court or go to the other side of the court. They need to stay on that one side. Um, the other thing is don't go under the net at any of the time. We ask no jewelry um, for any of the players and just be very encouraging with all of the players. Again, this is a recreation league. We want them to have fun and we want to teach them um, the basics and stuff of volleyball. Some people for seventh and eighth grade even might be their first time playing volleyball. Um, some other people have been playing since they were in first grade. So keep that in mind. Again, this is a recreation league. We want everyone to learn and have fun. And then to kind of go over the masks again. So masks are required unless you are able to maintain social distancing. So if you can maintain that social distancing, you do not have to wear a mask, um, but keep, keep that in mind, be courteous of that um, and do your best to kind of uh, abide by those uh, rules that we have set. The other thing that we want to mention is the need for soccer cleats. Uh, again, with this being an outdoor season, especially Saturday mornings, the grass may be a little bit wet. So if you do have some soccer cleats that you want to wear, it might be better to do so. Um, it may get a little slippery if you're just wearing tennis shoes out there. We do ask that there's no metal cleats. Um, so just kind of regular soccer cleats out there. You're more than welcome to wear them if you would like.
And that kind of wraps up the volleyball presentation. Um, I'm going to kind of hand it over to Josh before I hand it over to Josh to give you a little bit more information on just kind of what's to come and emails and stuff. I do want to um, kind of give you the heads up. I know I emailed pretty much everyone or I should have at least kind of explaining when your practice times will be um, and kind of how the season and when dates and stuff start. If you did not get any, any of that, I can, um, if you did not get any of those emails and stuff, please contact myself, which my name is Logan or Josh, and he can kind of uh, give you that information. Um, we are limiting practices per one time per week. So keep that in mind as well. As far as teams go, teams will be um, announced. We're hoping to do that by the end of tomorrow um, by three o'clock at the latest. So coaches will get all of their team rosters and then they can go ahead and contact you as players um, before next week starts since next week on Monday will be the first day of practices for those that are practicing on Monday. So now I'll kind of turn it over to Josh um, and he can kind of give you a little bit more information and then we'll take questions at the end if you do have any uh, questions regarding the volleyball season. So first off, thank you everyone for joining tonight um, for the, both the soccer and volleyball meetings. Again, I know Tiki mentioned it, but Bobby will be recording a more in-depth video going over the protocols and guidelines regarding both soccer and volleyball and with just some more general sports specific um, or general sport information and then the soccer and volleyball rosters we'll have those out tomorrow for your um, on team side and for you to see the schedule and what days you will practice and all of that along we'll be also sending out the parent packet with just more information for you guys to look over this meeting is being recorded so we will post this on team sideline if you guys would like to go on there and review it or we'll also be sending out a link to everyone um, to view it that way. Again, my name is Joshua Sandin alongside Logan Anderson and Matthew Tiki Lee. And if you guys have any questions throughout the season at any time, just give us a call or an email and we will help you figure um, that question out. And I'm just, we're just really excited to have this season go. So thank you guys so much. If anybody has questions, we can definitely take them right now. Yeah, for either soccer or volleyball. Just to clarify, you soccer cleats for volleyball? Yeah, so we're just saying that um, because of the fact that we will be playing on grass. And so if it is wet, um, especially like game days for Saturday mornings, the grass is going to be a little wet. So if they want to wear soccer cleats just to help with traction um, so they're not falling and stuff while playing, they're more than welcome to do so. Yeah, I recommend maybe trying out the first week of practice to see if uh, first week or two, see if just tennis shoes are fine with the grass. But that's just a recommendation. You don't have to go out and get soccer cleats for volleyball. Um, okay, I would, I would try it out first, though. Anyone else have any other questions? All right, well, if you guys have any questions that I might think of later or throughout the weekend or tomorrow, just give us an email or a call and we will reach out and get those questions answered. Thank you guys and have a great night.